Welcome to the video tutorial part two for chemical reactions. This tutorial is going to focus on collision theory, which is a really fundamental concept that helps to make the reactions more logical as we dig deeper. Let's get started. Alrighty, so collision theory states that for a chemical reaction to occur, the following conditions must be met. We have to have a collision. The reactants must collide for a reaction to occur. Secondly, they have to have enough activation energy. So activation energy we will symbolize E sub A. So not only do they have to collide, they have to have, the reactants have to have a minimum total energy, right? So the energy of the collision must be greater than or equal to the activation energy, which you can think of as that minimum um, energy. All right. And then it's not enough for there to be a collision of the highest energy, of the, at least that minimum energy. It has to have the correct orientation. The reactants must um, come together so that the re we can make and break the appropriate bonds. So I would like to demonstrate this for you right now. All right, so if we visualize a successful reaction as a loud clap, right? So there was our reactants um, colliding together with enough energy and the correct orientation. So let's see what happens if we don't have any one of the three criteria, right? So there has to be a collision, right? If my hands don't hit, if the reactants don't hit, we don't get a reaction. And if they come together very gently, there is not enough energy to get the reaction. And then last but not least, if the orientation is wrong, we won't get our reaction either, right? Our reaction is symbolized by the clap. All right, now we'll dig deeper into each one of these three criteria. So first let's look at the collisions, right? The reactants must come together. This is an important reason for our solution chemistry. Reactions typically occur in a liquid or a gas so that the reactants are able to move. Now the activation energy is this minimum energy we need for the collision. So let's look at examples here. So if this, um, if this represented reactant A, and here we had reactant B. In this example, the energy of the collision is below the activation energy. So when we look at the products, we continue to have A and B, right? So we have A plus B, and we end up with A plus B, so nothing changed. Right? This would be no reaction. On the other hand, though, if the collision energy is greater than or equal to the activation energy, then we have our same original A and B. However, we will produce two new substances, C and D. So if we wrote this as a reaction, now we would say that A plus B produce new substances. So this would be a successful reaction. Reaction occurs. All right. Okay. Now let's go on to orientation. So we'll go to the next page. And here is a diagram to represent one reaction. So remember that even if the activation requirements are met, some collisions still do not occur because um, not only do we have to have sufficient energy, but we have to have proper orientation. So before we um, look at the possibilities, we want to step back from our reaction and note the changes. Right? What changes? So we see here 
that we have nitrogen in a 1 to 2 ratio with oxygen, and then it changes to 1 to 1, and the carbon starts with a 1 to 1 ratio and moves to a 1 to 2. So we see that we, are, we lose one oxygen atom here, and we're going to gain one oxygen atom. All right, so now let's think about the structure of our product. So we've spent a lot of time working with carbon dioxide. So we know the Lewis structure of carbon dioxide. So we know that the carbon atom is sandwiched between the two oxygen atoms. Now let's look at these three possible scenarios to see which one would support the correct orientation. Notice here that we have O to O interaction, and that's not going to create our desired product. So this would be an improper orientation, no reaction. When we look at the next example, though, we see that we have a carbon to oxygen interaction, and notice that this interaction gives us the correct alignment to produce our product. So this would be a correct, re we would get a successful reaction here because we have the proper orientation. And then one last example. Here, notice that we have the nitrogen and the oxygen interacting, and that does not create our final product. So once again, no reaction. Okay. And then to tie this all together, right, let's think about what happens if the um, nitrogen dioxide and the carbon monoxide collide with the correct orientation, however, the collision energy is below the activation energy. What happens? Nothing, right? For a chemical reaction to occur, we have to have all three events simultaneously. So we have to have the um, collision with sufficient energy and the correct orientation. So um, I'm not sure how many practice problems or homework problems there are for this topic, but it's a very fundamental understanding that will support you um, as you work through other reaction questions.